happily present the next group of test research. Uh, Christian Sandol, coming from Software Center, right? And yes. then I leave the floor to Professor Sandol. Thank you very much, Sigrid. And uh, thank you very much for inviting us and think this Swedish research collaboration way that uh, has been successful for, for many years that uh, different centers and things keep track of each other. So Give you an idea of what Software Center is and to introduce you to some things we are doing uh, with connection to automated testing. So Software Center is a consortium between these 12 fine companies, Ericsson included, and these universities. Uh, and uh, the way we normally work is that uh, we work in six month sprints and before a sprint starts, researchers try to make these people in companies interested in participating in different projects. And uh, so there is a lot of contacting networking. Then we submit a proposal. There is a task force only with industry representatives who prioritize amongst the uh, suggestions. Uh, then we got, uh, got a grant for the six months, we do some work, and then we have a reporting workshop, and then we are back again. So some projects are run for many years, some projects only for a couple of sprints. Uh, so, so that's the thing. And uh, there are two things that I'm very thrilled about when it comes to the software center. Uh, the first is that we have a common non-disclosure agreement. So whenever we meet in meetings, uh, we don't have strong competitors here, but we can speak openly, we don't need to hide things. We can show unpublished material from universities and companies can show real test cases and uh, there is no hinder in the dialogue. That's one thing. The second thing that I find thrilling myself is that companies love to talk to each other. That's important for them. Sometimes, oh thank you, uh, sometimes they even organize uh, uh, company to company experience report workshops and they discuss a lot of things lively they are like kids in a candy store to do the that but we don't and so on not on individual test case level but not uh, on the right level talking about tools and uh, processes organizations and <coughs> ways of optimizing as academians we are always invited to listen in to these things this is very rewarding so therefore I like being here. Uh, the uh, most of the research is done in four different uh, themes. So we have four th themes whereof I'm representing continuous delivery. And uh, we are mostly dealing with the continuous delivery, continuous integration tool chain. Uh, we have made contributions in how the architecture of these things should be organized and we also work with visualization of what's happening in the tool chains. Uh, we have the metrics team which is also uh, doing some test automation and uh, they have long experience of transferring good experience not the least from Ericsson into other countries in measurement systems going from the lowest code level up to highest management level and they are extremely good in securing the information quality that's there. Uh, we also have a team called uh, Continuous Architecture and uh, uh, they are working with things such as technical depth and this as Sigrid said what's happening when we want to work agile but uh, need to fulfill uh, security uh, certifications and other stuff. Uh, the customer data and ecosystems are dealing with just that so they are researching methods of going from user behavior into requirements that uh, continually can be uh, circumvented in the software development cycle. They also have a lot of appreciated thoughts about uh, ecosystems, uh, companies that work together in partnerships, uh, uh, tight or loose, but uh, what that affects the strategic decisions. When it comes to continuous delivery, we have a lot of challenges there such as uh, high de demand for automation, where Ericsson perhaps is best in class. Uh, complex machinery, as we understood. Uh, we sort of remove 
the complexity in development where people had to talk to each other and coordinate things that's moved into the machinery now. So we have to maintain that. Many stakeholders, all from developers who wonder where did my commit go, until managers who want to know are we ready for release yet. Uh, there is a change in, in the organization, the mindset. We see that also in companies where automated testing is not that developed. We just finished a master thesis uh, where with another company outside software center that had no test automation at all. So this was the first thing to start thinking, is it worthwhile to automate? And uh, what benefits, return on investments are more likely to show up? And of course, this requirement, faster, 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 fast feedback, continuous everything. That seems to be in the interest of uh, software center companies. And actually, test automation is one of the rare exceptions where researchers didn't uh, talk to industry. But it was uh, f four companies who joined together and said that, please, do something to optimize the, the, the feedback loop for test automation. So are there any takers? And the takers were we. So this is the, the team working here. Uh, today we have with us uh, Asim Ahmad, who will have a poster. Uh, Francisco Gomez, who will also have a poster sitting somewhere. Ola Leifre, my colleague, is also here. Uh, absent friends are Edward and Miroslav and Khaled, who are work and Miroslav and Khaled are working in the software metrics teams, more or less. The research project I'm going to give an overview of today is uh, uh, in the continuous delivery theme, uh, diversity-based test optimization. We have a poster of that. And uh, we also have started a project in flaky tests. And we have a very recently started project in, uh, in uh, optimizing test suites for uh, early failure discovery. But uh, let's start with the diversity-based. This is a funny page I found on Facebook. Uh, 15 different bananas. Uh, when do you think a banana is good to eat? Easy for you, because you have the free knowledge. But for instance, when my mother was a kid, they didn't have bananas or Coca-Cola or anything that couldn't be imported due to the war. So they were quite grown up when they first tried their first bananas. So without free knowledge, which would you which would you, how do you test this? Well, you can have them all. 15 bananas, heavy dinner even for me, but uh, suppose that you can eat two of them, you wouldn't select number four and number five, they are very similar, you would select something that gives you information, won't you? I hope so. <laughs> and uh, for instance, number four, number 13 or something like that. And that's what we do with test cases. Uh, so what we do is that we try to select them based on diversity or non-similarity, whatever you want to uh, use it. We have all the test cases around in repositories. Uh, we try to analyze and find them to see these things that are, can be similar or different, that can be requirements, features they are testing, or the test steps. We do a parser to make the test case represented as comparable strings. Then we apply different techniques to calculate the distance between these strings, and we do that pairwisely, so that we get all the test cases in a matrix and its uh, relative distance to the other test cases. Uh, with this, we can then uh, pick a graph like this and try to select the most distant test cases, the n most distant test cases, and n is the number we think we can process uh, within our time slot. So with many companies, they have still the possibility to run all test cases overnight or at least over weekends. But in regression testing, when people are s uh, committing code now and then, uh, we want to just have a good selection. Uh, we have some initial results. We did a case study with about 1,000 test cases with, the, with one of our companies. And uh, we could remove about 85% without losing the coverage. So, uh, uh, so here we have on this axis, we have the removed two similar test cases. And we have the coverage in the features that are still tested. 
on the on the y-axis, and the uh, purple line there represents a random thing. Random is not bad if you just want to remove like 10% or so, but when it comes to more removal, a more conscious thing is, is shown to be better. Okay, we also did the case study where we reduced the, the test uh, regression test time from three hours to uh, three minutes. So in the first step, we use this similarity-based approach. And uh, here you have, on the y-axis, you have the, the percentage of test cases removed. So if uh, we, I think we had our cutoff point at 85%, leaves us here about. So it's 34 minutes instead of uh, 200 minutes, still covering all the, uh, all the features that we have. And it's uh, no magic behind it. It's just combinatorics and statistics. And uh, uh, then I said three minutes. Yes, I lied a bit, because we had more information. And uh, that was when we started thinking about uh, uh, the, all the hardware that was used. And uh, we found that uh, lot we had access in the test cases uh, to the hardware and the features. So we could have a perfect web uh, hardware installations, uh, test cases, and, f and features, great. So then we could uh, use that as a way of reducing uh, the amount of hardware needed. So if you think of this as a baseline, we had 242 products and almost 4,000 test cases run in two and a half hours. Then if we try to minimize the hardware with uh, ordinary combinatorial techniques, we could reduce the set to fi 50 installations of hardware and still have all 400 features covered and cut uh, the testing time to one hour and a half. Great, but in uh, normal life, people know which features they are working with. So suppose that we have a developer who knows the 10 features they are working with today, then they can also use this information uh, to minimize the test suite even more. So in that case, uh, on average, we came down to five products, and it runs in about uh, three and a half minutes. Uh, so that's a way of far better off than with uh, having to wait for several hours. Three minutes is perfect. Even if we go back one slide and the 20 minutes, also good. You can grab a cup of coffee and answer some emails, and then you can continue working. So that was our way on test minimization, and uh, it's very easy to join. We would love more data. Just come with your test cases, show us some examples. We discuss the structure, and uh, we have the tools to write the parser and start doing more uh, analysis of this. Uh, the second project we have started uh, deals with flaky tests. Flaky tests are tests that give different verdicts without you changing neither the software nor the test cases. It can be quite annoying. And uh, there are different strategies to handle this within the software center companies. Some of them just skip them. We, we need fast feedback, skip these. Uh, some of them run repeatedly until they pass. Never th don't mind about history, let's look forward. Uh, and uh, many of them try to prevent them with different ways. But still, even those who say they have no flaky test uh, in uh, questionnaires say that they spend quite a lot of time in dealing with flakiness in their uh, test suites. Uh, we also talk a little bit about the risks. That's a future uh, goal we have to think of. You are taking a risk if you skip a test case. Yes. Is it smart to do it? Uh, so we have a study right now with a uh, a questioner and a workshop uh, with four companies. We transcribed the stuff and made this little table where we try to formulate all factors that either reduce or increase the flakiness. And with literature, we have unified terminology and also classified them. Our request right now, and we would need some help with, is to have your expertise ra ra rating whether it's increase or decreasing, and how strong that relation is. 
So we have a questionnaire that we were mo more than happy to spread with other companies at Ericsson. This is just an example of how we find these things from text. Uh, finally, we have a very recently started project where we try to optimize uh, the test cases according to whether we can find uh, the minimal amount of test cases that can find faults early. So what uh, we do is that we have a history of uh, builds on the main branch and between uh, builds we look for the added lines of code. We make uh, a feature vector of these capturing interesting properties about those code lines. We match them with old test cases that we know if they failed or not and there we have a huge training set. We use some kind of neural network to train this and hopefully we'll be able to predict what is the best test cases given that you really want to hit a failure fast. This is very preliminary things. You can see that uh, the optimal test case, it's a bad picture here, is, uh, and this is the size of the test suites, is almost around extended, reduced, or original, but we do find uh, defects faster. So that's for sure. But still, it's very immature stage of research. It's only about 50% accuracy, and most of this is due to that we have to refine our models, for instance, number of levels and things in the, in the neural networks and such things. So the conclusion is we have promising initial results and we will definitely ask for more data to make solid publications in academia and uh, good advice, uh, spread experience amongst companies in software center that is most appreciated. And joining is very easy for software center companies. Visit us at uh, the poster and demo afterwards. Thank you.